An error occurred. Oh, we it said live. We're live. We are live. Mm-hmm. There is there is an error, but um, it says that we are live. Reds live. opening day is here. The Reds had a hell of a day. It was super, super fun. Nick Martini's hitting dingers. We got dudes out there just having a ball. We're going to talk that. We're going to talk about these NFL rule changes, that and much more coming up next on Big Play Cincy. <laughs> What is up, Bengals fans? Welcome to Big Play Cincy. Coming off a hot opening day for the Reds, man. What do you think, Drew? Well, we got to start the show now. What's up, Cincinnati sports fans, right? We can't just pigeonhole the Bengals fans. We're well-rounded journalists, as you can see. (laughs) uh, We've got... You set term very oh, yeah. lightly. <laughs> yeah, well-rounded journalist. You can see we got the the red big play since the logo for baseball season. Shout out to Cody for making that and sending it over to us. So we're yeah, we're rolling. Um, yeah. dude, that was a fun baseball game today, was it not? Holy crap, man. Yeah. I mean, we were texting back and forth, like, okay, let's see what they can do. All of a sudden, guys are on the plate. All of a sudden, Martini slams one. Let's go. Little time passes by, boom! He slams a second one. I mean, dude, the guy hasn't started an opening day in his 13-year career, and he comes out here and he launches two balls to Kentucky. Uh, like you cannot ask for more than that. Um, my favorite term for those, obviously, is piss missiles. Dude's 33 missile. years old. Comes up opening day. Let's have a blast. And I'm gonna hit a couple piss missiles out there to yep. the bleachers for the fans, somebody to go home with something sweet. It oh, was yeah. absolutely awesome. Um, the, the Reds win, obviously, which is most important. Eight two. Um, right. they go ahead and they beat the nationals eight to two. Um, Montez comes in six scoreless innings before he sits it down. Um, mm-hmm. reliever comes in, Pagan, I believe. Uh, gives up a couple runs. It doesn't matter if you give up a couple runs when you already got seven of them on the board. It yeah. doesn't matter. You can have a couple late game runs. Yeah. Um, and dude, the city of Cincinnati was just electric today. I uh, really wish I could have made it down there. Um, I do plan on attending several Reds games this summer. Just wasn't able to make yeah. it down today. Um, Jake says that was a a, co- a cock shot. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, that's something that we got. <laughs> Sorry, um, you too. Kay Breezy's here. He was there. He was drinking a garage beer at the game. Okay. Uh, he sent me a picture. He was ready to go. Yeah. Nate's here, and this one belongs to the Red Legs Drew. He probably met Drew and Ron. Don't worry. Uh, uh, Darth Bingo's here. I'm drinking redacted, no free ads, because I've slacked and not got any garage beer yet. Darth, uh, I don't know exactly what area you live in, but you go to the brewery over there in Covington. You can pick it up yep. um, oh, yeah. and, and get you some. But, yeah, the garage beers were Kroger. flowing, says K Breezy. It's awesome. Kroger has them. Um, Kroger, yeah. And then Jake says, this is what we call dingers when we hit nukes on MLB The Show. So, yeah, the ball was flying today. Yep. And, look, yep. let's let's just – you want to relive it? Uh, yeah. You want to relive yeah. Nick Roll Martini that. hitting piss missiles? Because <laughs> I think I could stand to relive Nick Martini hitting piss missiles. Yeah. Here's the first Consistent one. with that culture. Martini launches to right. The first bomb of 24 belongs to 23. I know last year when this team went on a winning streak. Gorgeous. 405 feet. Gorgeous. Just crushed. And you know what? Shortly after that, he said, damn, that first martini was good. I'm going to make it a double. Saw that play at third base. Martini to right center. A two-home run day. Order of Martini, and they make it a double. His second career, two home run. Dude, that's just so Shout fun out. to watch. So Shout fun out, watch. John's. I don't know if it's Sadak or Sidak. I don't know, but mm-hmm. he 
dude, when, when a ball goes deep or something really cool happens, like Ellie hits for the cycle last year, John yeah. Sadak, Sadak, I'm sorry, I don't know the pronunciation. Maybe somebody can tell me. He just lets his nuts hang in the booth, yeah. dude. He's just yeah. in his bag. It's awesome. I mean, the city's buzzing like that. Yeah. The 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 stadium's packed. You see people jumping up down, holding their beers in the air. Everybody's clapping. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. Nobody in the world does opening day like Cincinnati. I've yet to experience the full mm -hmm. day. I was going to get down there um, this this year, but uh, wasn't able to. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm going next year. Yeah. Barring man, like a complete travesty or an accident or something of the sort. I'm yeah, going. of course. Yeah. Which we pray that doesn't occur. But dude, it's. You got to go. We, we got to go next year. It's so fun. Uh, I've been to many. I mean, as a kid growing up, as an adult, hell, we went in college. Uh, it, it's there's nothing like it. Like there, other other cities have their versions uh, of their home openers, but there is just simply nothing like a Reds opening day down there at the banks. Freedom Way, just like the entire population of Cincinnati is in the middle of the street slamming insert garage beer ad and it is just it's so electric dude like it's unbelievable and for them to go in there after such a fun fun afternoon and day let's be honest and win eight to two jeez good night dude that's awesome um oh, i do want to placement yeah go for it let me hear it oh, oh it's so good so shotgun good. one of these bad boys after the win <laughs> um like, people continue to hate on my shotguns on twitter did you hear the cares? splash when he opened it hey they're not all going to be perfect baby that's Nerds. a pint straight down the gut who cares yeah i do want to bring up that today obviously uh the double martini <laughs> went went down very smooth uh but i very much so enjoyed the spencer steer and jake freely combination it just seemed like steer was able to get the hits in and move freely around the bases really by the way is an incredibly intimidating looking human being with the beard and the bandana i know that that's talked about normally but we haven't talked about it on here so um there's just a lot of good things going on for the red legs you alluded to to pitching earlier um and the the broadcast even talked about it that like this is this is what you can expect out of him you know what i mean on the mound uh early in the season early in these games so i mean it was it was fun to watch overall dude yeah, and the moment didn't seem too big for him. No. I was watching some of the pregame coverage. He's talking. He's like, hey, it's opening yeah. day. That's cool. Glad mm -hmm. they trust me to set the tone for the season. He's like, but, you know, it's a baseball game. I got to go out there, and I got to throw the ball. Um, so it was – I don't know, man. I can't wait to get down there. Um, yeah. I'm, I've been looking at some tickets here here lately. We'll go. Um, I, yeah, dude, we can just go down there and just – You got to get one of these. What is that? What is that? <laughs> That's from the – Oh, what suite is this from? I was in the fifth. No, flex. E -E. flex yeah, yeah, yeah. Minor, minor flex. The, but this was not. This was not a Bangalorean. Uh, this was a former employer. Uh, GE suite, dude. They let you take them home. They let you take these these home. They fill them with uh, crappy beer. It wasn't garage beer, uh, and they let you take them home. But we got to get you one of those, dude. You can purchase garage beer at Great American Ballpark. I saw the photos today. You know the little grab and go cases they got set up. Yep. There was there's pints of garage beer in there. It looked like so uh, that's yeah. very exciting. So yeah, we'll love we'll it, get down it. there. We'll have some fun. We'll be idiots. And you know, like we said, we're we're fans of Cincinnati sports. I can't tell you what a curveball is. I can't tell you how to calculate an on-base percentage. I don't know what the hell war means or any of that. But you know what I do know? I know when. It's a piss missile. I yeah. can yell really loud. And I know yeah. that they sell garage beer and I know that they sell hot dogs. So yeah. I'm set. I'm good. A night game at Paycor, you catch a firework Friday. Oh. That's awesome. I, I took my wife last year, um, two one, and they lost. And then they still did the fireworks. That was a little weird. I felt yeah. like the fireworks after a loss is is wild. Um, I mm -hmm. just realized not wearing my wedding ring because I took it off when I was uh, washing dishes earlier. Am actually married. Just take it off when I'm washing things because I don't want to fuck it up. Um, but oh, there's an f bomb. We got an f bomb okay. out of the way early. Just um, <laughs> it, it happens. It's okay. Um, oh, okay. Well, and then I, I do want to touch on this. I want to touch on this. Kevin just brought this up in the chat. Absolutely. Jake Fraley had a very emotional day. He was uh, emotional before opening day. His five-year-old daughter is fighting leukemia right now. Um, things are doing good. He said she's crushing it, but it, it was a Killing cool story. It. 
see on the broadcast. Um, they've been to Miami for treatment. They've been other mm-hmm. places. She's in the uh, the great care of the people at Cincinnati Children's. So that is an awesome story. We we wish well for her, obviously, yep. as she keeps things uh, progressing. And we keep getting good news as we watch this season unfold. Didn't mean 100%. To- Feel free to You're make- okay. No, hey, but we we talk Garage Beer. Uh, obviously, Big Place Cincy, presented by Garage Beer. Uh, and also presented by Typical Sports Book. Uh, what, was your, <laughs> what was your bet today? I, me- I, I, caught, I caught the tweet. And then I scrolled and and it did the reload and I couldn't find the damn tweet again. Did you win? Or did you lose today? Uh, I lost about seventy five dollars on That's the game okay. today. Um, okay. I, I felt froggy yesterday, so I hopped on the Typico Sportsbook app. Uh, you can yep. scan the QR code on your screen. Um, yep. Bet twenty five dollars, get up to one hundred dollars in bet credits. And up to 5% cash back. It's one of the coolest things I've seen on that app. As I'm placing bets, I see my progress bar for my cash Pretty back cool. going up. So I know I'm going to get a little bit of money back off my average wager. Um, but I bet yesterday because I felt frog. I put 25 bucks on the Ellie Day of the Cruise anytime homer. Um, thought he was going to get loose today. I want to investigate his bat because last year he was um, stopped in a game because he had like a rubber tip on the end of his bat. Um that I just decided I was going to call the reservoir tip. Um, and I want to <laughs> okay. know if he's still allowed to use that. Yeah. But, um, he ended up not going yard. And then I asked the people, I asked the people of Twitter, should I bet your fee or Nerfy for this game? Okay. And for those that don't know what that is, your fee is a yes run first inning. So there is going to be a run scored in the first inning. And a Nerfy is a no run first inning. The people hyped me up, got me going. Yeah. I went 50 bucks on the your fee. I slammed 50 bucks on the year fee. I'm like, cool. I'm going to win like a hundred bucks or whatever it was. <laughs> um, there was a no run first inning. So I lost uh, that too. But dude, I'm telling you what, man, the, the, the typical app is user friendly. Yeah, really. Um, you get 5% cash back and they, they're a proud sponsor of our show. So if yep. you want to gamble, that's the way to do it. If you're a new user, you can get the hundred dollar in bet credits. If you're an existing user, you probably already know how cool the app is. So we should 100%. be good there. Um, I don't know exactly how I'm going to approach this gambling season actually, because <laughs> I, I, I had so many good reds parlays last year. I lost them on strikeouts and this is me baseball stooge, right? Not a baseball expert. I kept betting yeah. on Luke Weaver get strikeouts. And then I learned that Luke Weaver stinks and that's why he's not a red anymore. Um, so I got to adjust the parlay a little bit. I didn't go parlay today. I just did the Ellie Homer and the year fee. Um, but I got to adjust the parlay strategy a little bit because I just, I got killed by strikeouts last year. Um, so I'm going to try to get back in the lab here. I don't, I, I don't. I don't know enough about baseball to be an informed better, uh, but I can do research and I can find people that are smart about it. If, yeah. if, if you want to, if you want to, a, a very, very smart baseball show, um, Chatterbox Reds is great. We're fans. We are like hit ball far, you know, kind of guys. So, um, you know, there's, there, there's, hit ball far. there's stuff out there for everybody. Hit ball far, throw Chug ball beer. fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to drink garage beer out of a baseball bat. The, the the bat glasses have you seen those um, yeah i, I have do i want to do that i don't know exactly how i'll do that um where i can get one if they're on amazon but um, it would have been cooler if i was drinking the garage beer out of a bat today yeah you have to like sneak it into the ballpark i don't know if they have bats at the ballpark i know some do i bet they got beer bats yeah. somebody in the chat can tell me there's 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 pro reds games attenders in the chat yeah. sir boy where if he's in here he'll know I got a question. Where do you stand on the Skyrosa? Well, here's my thing. I'm going to get slaughtered for this if I say this publicly. Um, I've said it on the timeline a couple of times, and I've gotten some some shit for it. But uh, I'm a no. I, I, I'm not a cheese guy. Um, cheese? When I get when I get, I, I don't like cheese. Um, like I'll eat it on pizza. Um, I'll, I'll eat I'll eat cheese on pizza. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm selective with cheese. I guess is what I'll say. But like you get it on your. Of, skyline right no no what that's, hold that's, on whoa, that, whoa, freeze, freeze this is where i get the slander hold on wait you have to what's your skyline order hold on i get just chili spaghetti right. i i order a th- i order a three-way the bag of cheese comes on the side and i just give it to my wife or my daughter are you and kidding it, and i i eat the i eat the um 
I eat the chili spaghetti. I get the oyster crackers. I'll get a coney, no cheese, no mustard, no onion. So it's just a hot dog and the chili because I have a phobia of mustard. I, I yeah. if mustard's not allowed Yuck. in my house. Yuck. Um, so I'm not sure if I can do the sky rosa because I feel like if I do the sky rosa, no cheese on the coney, everybody's gonna call me a fraud, right? <laughs> K Breezy said in the chat, confirm Drew is a weirdo. Solid on St. Taddy's yeah. Day. <laughs> Kevin and I um went to the sky. I think he went to the skyline tent with me at St. Taddy's Day, and I just got the chili spaghetti. And the people working didn't even know what to do. They're like, uh, we don't want to like charge you full price for this because you're not getting cheese. So like just give us three bucks or whatever it was. I didn't know um, this about you. I did not know. Oh this. no. Have you I, I lost a fr- I lost a friend? No, I lost no, a friend no, no. <laughs> over this the- cheese thing the habanero cheese have you tried it no i don't like cheese why would i try habanero cheese i don't like spicy stuff or cheese you don't like is it a texture thing i think this is what it is go <laughs> Kevin said i raw dog my chili <laughs> um, <laughs> so i'm selective with cheese i'll get i'll eat cheese pizza i'll eat okay. macaroni and cheese i think it's mostly mostly like yellow melty liquidy cheese. I don't know if it's a texture. I don't know what it is. I just don't I don't like it. You dislike it, yellow melty? Yeah, like 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 liquid nacho cheese Yuck. is I don't repulsive like to me. I'm not a fan um, of that. Well, I I don't eat cheese on my burgers. I don't I don't eat cheese on my burgers. Have you here's my um, actual final question. Have you tried it on this on this guy on the three way or whatever? No, no, no. I, I haven't had I haven't had most kinds of cheese since I was a child. Um, um, my my friends and family make fun of me and say that I actually am as picky as a child, or I have the taste buds of a child. But I so if I do a Sky Rosa, which the La Rosa's pizza, phenomenal. Uh, La Rosa's and I got off on the wrong foot. We talked You're about it today. Now. We're friends now. We're good. Yeah, we, we're back. Um, so it. I do eat mozzarella sticks. That's a good call, Darth, but that's white cheese. It's not yellow, melty, gross looking cheese. So cheddar, can we clarify? Maybe you don't like cheddar. Maybe because I I will eat a quesadilla that okay. has melty cheese in it. So All right, we're getting, I, I don't know how to explain it, dude. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> dude, there, there was just a tweet. Breaking what? news. Drew Garrison hates cheese and raw dogs his chili from Skyline. <laughs> per Drew Garrison. That's from Cincy Jake. <laughs> I'm I'm like, I didn't know this. Like, I really didn't know this. And I feel like <laughs> at this point, you and I know each other pretty well. So, like, this is this is breaking. Like, Schefter needs to tweet this shit out. Like, this is these are things that I keep close to the chest that I'm willing to share with the audience because I love you guys, but I know well, that there's going of to be know now there's going to be an active response to this kind of information. So you're getting it first, first, first person. Um, okay, Jake, that was a really is, good tweet. Yeah, this uh, is fair. I, now I'm educated on it now. I'll be honest. But, I've not had the sky Rosa. So, but to me, it's like, I've like got two really tasty things that I love and I love the taste of them individually. I'm anxious to smash them together and try them. I, I I've not had it. So to me, it, it I watch someone eat it and I'm like, I'm pumped you ate that. And then I'll have a Coney or a slice of La Rosa's pizza by itself. I don't know. I'm not at it. So I got a I got a text from my dad. Um, he's watching. He said, I raised a strange child. Uh, the guy is, <laughs> the guy played at Ohio State. He's a Buckeye. He has a Michigan Wolverine son that doesn't like cheese for yeah. a son. Um, so that's what he's got to live with. Um, but yeah, so I don't my question to the masses and you guys can tell me in the chat. Because I've been getting cooked on the timeline lately. People are telling me I'm a fraud. Uh, I don't know oh, no. baseball. Um, and, you know, I'm like, hey, I, I don't really know baseball. I'm in it for the fun, for the gambling, for the city. Uh, but That's if I go to Great American Ballpark and I eat a Sky Rosa, but the Coney doesn't have chili on it, am I a fraud at that point? Or am I still accepted into the Sky Rosa community? Because I don't want somebody to be like, your Sky Rosa has an asterisk on it. Is it a community? Um, Whoa. I, there's there is there is a sky rosa community that i'm pretty sure is pretty pretty intense i to me it'll be an official community when it has its own twitter page so if, if somebody out there has a sky rosa twitter page then it's official. they might so i don't know i'll try it i will try it 100 percent. but i think i'll go oh yeah i tried it and then separate them and eat them as i i please or <laughs> or i'll love it i don't know we'll see but to me 
It's a very different. I get the fat jokes on Twitter enough. Do I really need to be on there eating a giant slice of pizza with a coney wrapped in the middle of it? Like, is that what I want to open myself up to? You yes. saw the guy yes. calling me fatty the other day, and he's ginormous. Um, <laughs> was, so it I don't make know sense, if that was but... a real picture, but that was a very funny response. I think that's the real guy because his cover <laughs> photo added up was, too. It was all bent over and like hunched. I thought it was like a caricature, but you're right. Well, the there cover... was old ladies beside him, but I cropped them out because they didn't uh, do anything. They didn't, they didn't to be involved it. in the beef. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Um. So I, we we got to move on from that. Yeah, we do. We do. Sorry. Feel free to cook me in the chat for my weird cheese um thing um yeah. but that that is kind of what we're looking at so if i do i, I just want to make sure i'll do the sky rosa but there's not going to be cheese on the coney and if everybody's cool with it they're cool with it i might just do it and if you don't like it get over it um, yeah but i'll i'll join the sky rosa community jake's helped help me out by the way he's not fat in real life short maybe because he's taller than me but fat. Uh, <laughs> out. Um, i am an average height i believe for a male not super yeah. tall uh shorter than you um but yeah oh i'm six two so it's that's not average 17th son says embrace it that dude posted a picture of his last meal everyone thought it was his family <laughs> <laughs> And that's why I have fun with it. People are like, yes. don't stoop to their level or rise above it. It's too much fun for me. I can't. I got to make fun of people back. I, I, I can't help it. Mm -hmm. um, what is, is that a baseball dodgeball? Giant baseball. Giant baseball. Giant baseball gloves. Shout out Kroger. This was actually, I can't, no free ads, but the wine company ends with that. It was a, uh, a display. And I went to Kroger and I said, I would like to have that. And they said, if it fits in your car, you may have it. So there's a giant baseball glove back here with a baseball in it for baseball season. So that's going to be in the background. Sam Hubbard is on hiatus. He's on vacation right now. He's just right here in front of me. Both my Sam Hubbards. Now that I, now that I say this out loud, the fact that I have two life-size Sam Hubbard cutouts in one room is a little creepy, but it's okay. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just realizing you're, like, you're, an, you're an adult child. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I, 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 I am too. So don't look. Like, I, that's not a. Not, that's not a knock. Helmet. Helmets. Um, uh, there's like ten helmets so, in front of me. <laughs> so when do you go into Kroger? Do they have like little walkie talkies? where like, hey, that God's gonna be that here guys here for yeah. our old yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, can you just give him a baseball glove and tell me to get the hell out of here? No, I have a lady. Shout out my lady. I'm not gonna divulge <laughs> her name because the other you got people, a Kroger plug. I got a Kroger plug. I don't want anybody to find her because she's my Kroger plug. Back off. All right, man, we should go to that Kroger. Yes, it's a nice Kroger. We should probably transition here off of your eating habits and my creepy child <laughs> habits. Um, there's a football team in Cincinnati as well. Are we done with the Reds? Awesome. I, I think day. we've yeah, I think we've covered like the Reds enough right now. Um, you yeah. know, we'll learn more as the season goes. Um, but right now it was fun as hell. Yep. Um Kevin says one more comment and we'll, we'll transition. Kevin says literally just now realized Drew's background after Ron brought attention to his background. Yeah. Garage beers are hitting. Kevin's been in the paint today drinking the garage beer. I do have the big place since flag as my background now. Mm -hmm. um, don't have to stand up anymore. Can use the chair. Yep. Pretty Shout stoked out about that. Shout um, out Cody for that design. Our, Cody our... is a, a monster. Look, um, I do still have the garage beer next to me. You just can't see it in the uh, duo layout, but the solo yeah. layout, whenever we pop it out, it's there. Um, so, yeah, we can go ahead and transition to football. There have been some rule changes that have been brought to the NFL. Some great, some stink. Most terrible. of them, I would just say, stink. Now, the kickoff rule is a little bit complicated, so what I think we're going to do is we got a video that we're going to run. Start It'll go that. through some of the kickoff rule details, and then we can go from there. So, it's about a minute long. Enjoy for your viewing pleasure.
show business, wardrobe change, oh, we're yeah. a Bengals show again. How you guys like that? Absolutely. That's a good <laughs> looking biz, shirt. Baby. Logos yeah, upon show. logos with Drew. I'm There's logos that. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I, I almost wore the hat too, but I figured that'd be overkill. Oh, yeah. The hats are nice. Um, So nice. Red's hats are out too. We got red big play Cincy hats. Yeah. Well, this is just an actual Cincy hat. Yeah. Uh, but we've got red and white big play Cincy hats for baseball season on the big play shop now yeah. too. Um, so the first one that we'll go over is the video that you just saw, the complicated ass kickoff rule. Um, yeah. which is essentially what the XFL does. So the kicking team will still kick the ball from the 35 mm-hmm. yard line. Um, but the coverage team is going to be further down the field. There's going to be 10 yards of separation between them and the receiving team. Um, neither line can move until the ball is caught. Um, what is your, uh, your early opinion on the kickoff rule? All right. So the kickoff like used to be just, one of the most electric, like, I don't know, 10, 15, 30, how many seconds in football? Like, right? Like suicide squad is what you call the guys running down, trying to get the tackle or the blockers had to back pedal and try to stop these piss missiles, not to steal from our red segment in pads as they came down to kill their returner. Right. It was beautiful. Then they made it suck. They moved it up. It was a touchback every play. It was like, well, we should just probably get rid of this. You know what I mean? Like, it's stupid. It's antiquated at this point. It's a it's a touchback every single time, right? Unless the kicker antiquated? royally. Royally. That means old, Drew. Sorry. That means put out of your, date and old. Sorry. Put your dictionary down, dude. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. But now they come in with this. And I watched it in the XFL, right? And I was like, okay. It's a little weird. I got it. But... The amount of exciting returns that occurred was elevated rather than a touchback occurring every play. The kicker had to get it in the zone, which the the name of the zone is escaping me right now, but it's got a specific name. The returner had to do something with it. Okay. It it went in the zone most of the time. Right. And, And a lot of people don't like that. The, the, the guys running down to make the tackle and the blockers are right near each other. Whatever, but it, it it honestly it turns into kind of a crazy scrum, <clears throat> and and it's almost like close quarters combat versus trying to just absorb the body weight of someone running at you uh, and hope they don't run you over. Right? These guys meet from that short yardage distance, and they're hand fighting. The defenders are trying to rip, swim, power everything. Meanwhile, the returner he has to do something with it. And he's moving and, and trying to get and find a hole, right? And the kicker's back there, probably picking his nose. No offense, money, but, you know, here, kicker. It's awesome. And the kicker is incentivized to keep that ball in bounds now, which is exciting to me. So if the kickers play along and teams don't go, you know what, the 35 or 30, I think, I think it's 35. That's insane. It's not that big of a deal. But if the kickers play along and they keep it in the zone, there's going to be some sort of return every single kickoff and if you watched some of the xfl because you just need football in your life like me you got to see some of these return teams run some silly ass trick plays that kind of worked so i it's going to add in terms of excitement in returns and excitement in in i think contact that isn't just like force running into a wall it's going to be hand fighting dips rips and everything so that's my take on it i think it's a i think it's a good thing because before it was touchbacks every time now there's in it's there's incentive to keep it in bounds and for there to be a return i have turned into like a boomer when it comes to rule changes in football like a grumpy old man where it's like it's football leave it alone but what i will say is Um, And a touchback, by the way, is the 30. They were thinking about doing the 35, and the NFLPA was like, no. So it's it's the 30, but that's still five yards up from the 25. Um, So, But what it's going to do, this is going to save the kickoff because Mm -hmm. there's been an all-out war on the game of football. We're going to get into a little bit more of the rule changes later. There's been a war on the kickoff for quite some time, and I think we were in danger of actually just losing it. So what this is going to do, it's going to save the kickoff. 
I don't want to start the game with a fourth and 15 to see who gets the ball or whatever some of the other proposals were. The camera's flashing at the Super Bowl for the kickoff. That first kickoff in pay core of a new year, it's, it's, it's electric. They play Welcome to the Jungle. We're jumping up and down. We're getting hype. So I'm glad that that stays. Choosing to look at this from a positive perspective is what I'm trying to do because, like you said, trick play options are going to open up. Um, it's almost becoming – like the the coverage team is becoming defensive linemen, kind of like you said, dips and rips exactly, and, and things at a line that I think will still be an entertaining, fun style to start a game, start a half after a, a touchdown, field goal, whatever. So I do think that it there there are positives that can come from it. So instead of just being the grumpy old man screaming about them killing the game of football. I'm going to be like, okay, this is cool. It keeps it in there. Guys are still going to make a living. They're still going to get their check on special teams. There's plenty of dudes in the league that are on the league for special teams. They're not a star receiver. Stanley Morgan was a great example of that. Signed with the Saints. Hope he has a good, good, good career out there. But he made his name with the Bengals largely on special teams. And guys get paid off that. And guys stay in the league extra years off of that. So I'm glad that that's still going to be there too. So I'm choosing to look at this from an optimistic standpoint. And like you said, it is going to encourage kickoff to be returned because I think most teams are going to try to put it in the landing zone because it's easier to cover it up close now. So you probably think you have a better chance of stopping them inside the 20, 25, rather than just spotting them out to the 30. So all in all, I don't love the fact that it changed, but I do see where there could be the bright side of this. And we don't have people having car crash impacts into each other's faces, which I can understand is good for the long term. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like you said it best, like we were looking at it just disappearing. You know what I mean? So the fact that, that we've got something over nothing is, is good. And I, I really do think by mid season, most people are going to be all in on this thing, man. And like, I was a kick returner and a punt returner, like back in the day when I could move and didn't have six knee surgeries. Like it was, it was scary, dude. The guy, like the guys running down like full speed catch and you got to move quick. You know what I mean? Like now they catch the ball. There's time they can assess. I mean, it's, I think that it's going to enhance special teams returners jobs. Like some people yeah. are afraid of them leaving or, or, or afraid of it's like, well, these guys, they built their careers on this. You alluded to it as well. Right. But we're going to see, I bet we see a new breed of player, honestly, because of the distance, right? The, the, the guy that can cut really, really, really fast. Do you know what I mean? On, on a dime short, short distance and can play in a small box versus the kind of receiver or running back that's in space. Right. So that's the kind of guy you're looking at. Hell, the chiefs just signed a rugby player. You know what I mean? So like, I, yeah. I think that you're going to see a new kind of returner spawn out of this rule change. And I'm, I, for one, I'm excited to see it happen. Hopefully it doesn't fall apart at the seams, but I think it's going to create more excitement than people realize. We've got a good comment here from Darth uh, relating it to yeah. the Bengals. Which of our current guys would you want to see returning with this new style? Chris Evans, Travion yeah. Williams, Chuck Sizzle, or a rookie? Um, Chris I like Travion. Or Tra yeah, any uh, yeah. But I don't know that he's going to be returning that many kicks because I think he's going to get yeah. kind of a bump in the yeah. running back room. But I like the idea of Chris Evans back there. Um, yeah. I don't think Charlie Jones is. I think Charlie Jones is more of a punt returner because there is a difference there. Um, and if he has a bigger role in the offense with the um, absence or leaving of Tyler Boyd, I don't know if they'll put him out for that. So I think that that could be a really good place for Chris Evans to carve a role in. There. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and there's, there's young guys in the draft too, and I'm, I'm pulling it up here. Let's just, I mean, these guys that are running fast, worthy look at, I, I mean, help Baker, like you've got guys in the draft too, that can, can, maybe fill that role right and there's probably guys out there that weren't returners before that'll try it and they'll they'll find their niche you know what i mean like the guy that's on his fourth team and just isn't hacking it as a receiver uh and, and then all of a sudden this new rule comes up and he's got new life you know what i mean so i think i a whole bunch of newness is going to come out of this rule so i don't know who does it for our team maybe evans i like that I think that, and one thing that I just thought of as we're having this conversation, mm -hmm. 
this may open teams up to putting more talented players back there because oh, yeah. there's not the risk of a linebacker like a Joe Bocci flying 40 yards down the field and hitting your star receiver with yeah. a full head of steam now. So maybe because you remember when Pittsburgh would put Antonio Brown back to yep. return punts and everybody's like, yep. why the hell are you doing that? Yeah. He's one of the most valuable guys on your team. Mm -hmm. And because people don't want him to get hurt on that. But if you look at it from the flip side now, these coaches could be like, hey, there's not guys running, you know, a full sprint the whole length of the field, Adam. Mm -hmm. If we can set our blocks up right, do we put a Jamar Chase back there? I hope not personally. Don't want to uh, see Jamar yeah. Chase return a kick well, ever, no on. matter what, yeah. because if he got hurt on it, I'd lose my mind. But guys of that caliber, would they maybe decide, okay, we can put one of our more talented impact mm -hmm. players back there to try to make something happen? Like, dude, shout out Pac-Man Jones. Pac-Man Jones, there's no more fair catches. And that wouldn't affect Pac-Man at all because Pac-Man Jones never fair caught shit. He was he trying to make a play. And he was your starting outside corner. Yeah. So they would put him in there on the shorter fields. If you got a team pinned and it's going to be a shorter field, they're going to get the ball in Pac-Man's hand because he's going to make that first guy miss and he's going to mm -hmm. flip the field. So you might see that on kickoffs now. You might see them put a, a, a talented defensive back back there. Like, you yeah. know, they tried to make Devin Hester a defensive back. He was a returner. Or yeah. you may see guys that just find that niche in the league so. and – get paid off of it he was so good hester was so good yeah I, pac man would have thrived in this with this rule like, i think so too straight up, straight up 100 yeah like, I, yeah I, I i like this one so i don't have anything else to add to this one other than i'm just excited to see it happen i mean there's uh we'll get into the rule that we absolutely hate uh but uh i had another rule change up here uh, the challenge rules are giving teams another challenge if they if they win the challenge they'll have a third challenge okay cool awesome um, and then there's a, a couple other smaller ones, uh, that I had up on my screen here with my iPad. Uh, 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 uh. Doesn't want to call I know the trade deadline got moved back. A yeah. Week. Trade deadline um, got moved back a week. Uh, so we and there's like nine. a, yeah, there's a double foul rule. If there's a double foul during a down in which there is a change of possession, including if one of the fouls is a post possession foul by a team during a scrimmage kick, the team last gaining possession will keep the ball after enforcement for said foul, provided what? it did not foul before the last gain of possession. Yeah, you guys listen to that and take away from it what you will, because I don't even that know. Sounds what sounds like it's read. Uh, they they made that up to help. Kansas yeah, City, yeah, right? I agree. Uh, yeah, I, anything with penalties, it, we just go straight to Kansas City. Let's dive yeah. into the rule that you and I are steadfast and we just agree is ridiculous. The swivel hip drop tackle. Um, I'm going to start drinking. Go, <laughs> go, you go. First and foremost, can we stop using Logan Wilson as the poster boy for this tackle? Because it has come out. They have said the play where Logan Wilson hit Mark Andrews would not B flag for a swivel hip drop tackle. Yep. So Rappaport tried to make him a murderer. Everybody's posting the picture of Logan Wilson hitting Mark Andrews when they're talking Criminal. about the rule change. Criminal. It's stupid. He would not have been flagged. Now, that's the one that started all this, right? So everybody's going to use it, but let's use our brains a little bit here and understand mm -hmm. that with this rule change, if you've looked into it, Logan Wilson would not have been flagged for it. But to here is what's going to happen with this rule, Ron. You know well, how but, I get when this comes up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, hold on. Before you, I, you're about to get in the zone. So before, <laughs> just so we're clear, they are saying, "Oh, Logan Wilson's would not have been a penalty." Bullshit. They would have absolutely thrown the flag on that if this rule was in place because these referees cannot officiate games. End statement. Go. I want to bring this comment up real quick because my brother is in the chat. He does not get a single shit about any sport ever, but he makes a good point. Kroger needs to keep those garage beers in stock. I've got an issue with my local Kroger right now where there is zero garage beer in there forcing me to drive to a different Kroger. Um, I don't want to say that I'm going to start like a riot or anything if they don't fix it soon, Do it. but like there Do may it. be a little dust up at Kroger, Do it. Um, but on to the hip drop tackle. Rant, go. How much more can they take away from the defense? Is all I want to know. This is what's this is what's gonna happen with that rule. Yeah, everybody's gonna freak out about it like I am right now. Blood pressure's up, you know, boob sweat, all that. 
And then you're going to get into the season and you'll see it called a couple times. And everybody's like, oh, that's not that bad. Not a big yeah. deal. And then it's going to happen in a huge moment in a January game. We're talking end of the regular season when teams are fighting for playoff position, or we're talking a playoff game. And mm -hmm. for some reason, late in the game, somebody's going to get a stop on third down and the the flag's going to come in for the hip drop, and then everybody's going to lose their mind. There have been two fan bases in my mentions talking shit to me about this. It's been the Chiefs and it's been the Ravens. And I'm going to tell you this. I get it. We cry about the Revs, blah, blah, blah. When it happens to you, when it happens to your favorite team, I cannot wait to revisit this issue with you because it is going to be a complete and utter travesty of the game. Now you have to try to defy physics or find a new way to tackle a guy that's running in front of you or you or, or you risk. I, I just, how are guys going to know? What is the criteria for this? Is there going to be all these drills and practices and all this stuff that maybe gets them right? I hope so. But right now, the way that I see it is if, Keaton Mitchell from Baltimore gets two steps on Logan Wilson and he's running on a straight line to the end zone and Logan Wilson's behind him and God love the guy. He can't turn on the jets enough to get up beside him. What is he going to do? He's going to have to try to get low. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you go low, they flag you. You can't hit them high or they'll flag you. You can't pull them yep. down from behind. Now, how is it any defender in the NFL's fault? If yep. a guy's legs fall under him while he's trying to make a tackle, I don't understand it. Yeah. To me, a tackle ah. uh, outside of a horse collar, get it. That's like, it's flagrant, right? Like you, they're I grabbing. get a horse collar. Face mask. Oh, cool. I get it. Face mask. Get I it. Get, like, I get it. Head and neck area. I get it. Launching yourself, using your helmet as a weapon. I get it. I get those kind of things, right? But if you are running away from me, and I grab your hips, and I am not able in that specific tackle to all the Twitter experts in my in my comments, drive through and plant them into the dirt like your coach taught you, because guess what? It's not possible every time. I'm going to yank you backwards to stop, stay with me, to stop, your forward momentum towards the end zone. I, right? Like, what am I? I feel like it's very simple. It is so unfortunate that players have gotten injured. Players have gotten injured, injured hopping up and down on the sideline. Non-contact injuries. Players, Dre Greenlaw tore his what, Achilles yeah, yeah. jumping on the sidelines in the Super Bowl Joe, trying to hype himself up. Joe Joe Burrow threw a football and shredded a tendon in his hand. He just did this. It shit happens. Injuries happen. And Drew and I preach all the time. We don't want to see anybody injured. But this rule stinks. Stinks to high heaven. And there are people out there who are showing how to tackle and explaining the swivel and how it's a danger. And I get it. And I appreciate your effort and respect your opinion, but this rule stinks and it's only going to lead to the next thing. That's ankle, exactly what it is. Ankle injuries, because we're going to be diving at ankles. Uh, I don't know any kind of other injury because they're going to have to adjust, right? Like, I don't know. And they're like, well, it only happens once a game. So blah, 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 blah. If it only happens once a game, why are we worried about it then? Why are we why are we freaking out and changing rules? If you're telling me your defense is it only happens once a game, why are we freaking out about it? It's a freak thing if somebody gets hurt with this. But I can tell you, as somebody who's done MMA, not like to any sort of high level or anything, and judo. Chill out, Chuck Liddell. Yeah, I know. I, I really like cringe saying that out loud. But like that's a throw, man. You you bring your your weight backwards. Drop your hips and attempt to move the person in an opposite direction. It's 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 natural body movement, and we're trying to penalize natural body movement. To me, it's the equivalent of like penalizing Michael Vick for throwing the football sidearm. That's how he learned to throw the football. And there was a guy in front of him, and he was trying to throw the ball around him. Logan Wilson was trying to stop Mark Andrews' forward momentum. So he dropped his hips and went backwards to stop the momentum. 
it's we're because penal- the only alternative in that situation, score. like my boy Donnie says, Andrews would have drugged Logan Wilson into the end zone. Yes. End of story. Yes. He would have either gotten drug into the end zone or he'd have to put his hands up and say, okay, go have six points, Mark yeah. Andrews. That's 100%. the only option there. Obviously, that's not a play that's going to be called for that based on what the rule change has said, but that's but Logan's what everybody's a bangle, using. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And I will defend Logan Wilson with my life. Yeah. And and I again, I'm saying it again. They they can tweet that out as much as they want. Well, he wouldn't have been flagged. Yes, he would have. He 100 percent would have been flagged. These officials, after umpteen amount of years, still don't know what a catch is. Still can't recognize hand fighting from a DB. They they can't recognize. When someone lines up in the neutral zone, you think these morons are going to be able to recognize when a player intentionally drops and swivels his hips from a flanking direction? No, these guys are going to throw it if the guy hugs him from behind and they fall backwards. And we're going to see the NFL it so many Sorry. times. No, you're good. Go because that I mean, that's it. Like They're going to screw it up. They are. NFL officiating last season was the worst that I have seen it in my life. It was bad the year before, and it got worse. And what is the biggest issue with a lot of this stuff? Judgment calls. Not to harp on this, but, you know, we lost the game, blah, 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 whatever. But when you look back at the AFC Championship game in 2022 in Kansas City, they used judgment when Kansas City ran a third down play the play concluded. They did not pick up the first down, and then all of a sudden yep. they're like, "Oh, well, there was a there was a whistle that they didn't hear. Uh, it was a judgment call, or all of this stuff." So they're putting the game back in the hands of the officials to make judgment calls that yep. they have proven to be wrong for. And what happens after the game? After your team loses a playoff game or a regular season game that's going to matter in a couple of months, regardless, and the call's wrong, the NFL officials just <laughs> we'll we'll put out a tweet that says we fucked up. Well, that doesn't matter anymore because you can't just put out a tweet and say, my bad, because people have you under a microscope now. There are gambling scandals popping off left and right in professional sports. Did Shohei Otani do it? I don't know. Is the dude in the NBA rigging his own player props? I don't know. But there's investigations going into this. There's people that are saying this stuff is fixed. It's scripted. They play favorites. Vegas always wins. Blah, 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 blah. And you're giving the refs now more subjective calls for themselves to make in a split second. A tackle in the NFL is a second long, and they have to determine from the time that the guy makes contact to the time that the guy hits the ground. Did he swivel his hips and pull them back and land on his legs? It's it's not going to happen. Uh, We're going to have NFL instead of doing, I'm I'm almost done. I'm sorry. Go, go. No, you're good. Instead of the NFL doing things, now, there is one that I'll get to later that I do like connected to the gambling thing. But overall, the NFL is not doing anything to fix it. Roger Goodell would be like, yeah, refs did a great job. They're not doing anything to fix the idea that people are getting in their heads. And I've been known to take on a conspiracy theory or two, so don't mind me. But people are like, dude, look Alien. at this. This is rigged. This is sk-. So they're not doing anything to do that other than yeah. the, the sky judge thing that we can get into when we're on this. I just don't understand why the point of that rule is okay it only happens once a game so it's not going to affect the game if the tackle only happens once a game how often does a guy actually get hurt on it because they showed the video of what plays would be considered a swivel hip drop tackle the Bengals were on it twice getting tackled Tyler Boyd 2022 AFC championship game would have been a hip drop tackle there was one in Dallas okay tell me the numbers on how many times somebody actually gets hurt on that type of tackle and they're like oh well it's up 20 percent but it's up 20 percent from what if it only happens once a game yeah yeah I don't know. It's just, it's a dumb rule, man. It's a stupid rule. It's just like, you've got players too. DJ reader. When it came out tweeting, these rules are getting crazy out here. Two hand tag better fits the game. Darius slay. It's about to be a lot of missed tackles. Uh, I don't know who the hell this guy is. It's a player, but breaking news, tackling band. Like, look, players don't like it. The NFL Batchy from the Bengals. B- Batchy wrote a novel. Patchy yeah. wrote a novel on it, dude. Like the NFL PA didn't like the rule. It's just, it's such a like fake attempt to pretend they like player safety. You know what I mean? To me, like, and the only, the only way to fix it, it's not fix. Cause I don't, I truly don't think officiating is ever going to be a fix. Cause Goodell's an idiot. The only way to help the situation with the officiating is to make these referees full-time NFL employees and pay them for the like, like 
pressure they're under. Pay these guys, right? I don't need I don't need uh Johnson of Johnson and Johnson's law firm who went to camp to be a referee out here screwing this call up. Hire full-time referees. Throw a sky judge in there. I don't care, but have professionals doing it. It's just it just boggles my mind that these guys are still part time. Um, not to distract from that, but there's a oh. Facebook comment happening from some spammer it says, my name is Yvette, uh, but the Facebook Ooh. name is Rayad. Uh, I'm a businesswoman in France. They're commenting three times. I cannot kick them from commenting. So I apologize for that. Um, but Wait, here's the in thing the, I, in the chat, <laughs> oh, dude, just going off my on Facebook. Just be, what in the world are we doing? Dude, the porn oh, bots uh, are all over my Twitter and now they're coming they to are. Facebook. Can you but kick her? I don't know how to kick her. I, I can't. I just tried. I can only favorite it, and I don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> I can get on. I can get on the stream and block her from my page. Um, but yeah. I don't oh, understand. I, do um, I got a text from Jake that says, "Read my last comment." I'm sorry, man. Uh, you're gonna have to show me what that is. I, I've lost it. The, the the chat shuffle has been going crazy. But I'll look I, for I, it. I don't you understand. Talk, I'll look for it. I, I I have been on full time officials myself. I've always thought that that was a good idea. Um, but Mo Edgar, Mo Edgar, excuse me, brought up a really good point on Twitter one day where he said, what are we going to do when we realize that they can't get full-time officials? Because a lot of these guys have very good jobs. They're dentists, they're attorneys, they're lawyers. We got to pay. Them. Um, but so somebody's it was Mo. Mo was like, so what's it going to stop these guys from having these higher paying, maybe less stressful jobs and less scrutinized jobs to be a full-time NFL official. And I think that I understand that. I think that that's a valid point that I hadn't thought at this point, mm -hmm. but I, I, I just, I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how you fix it. I don't understand the, it's, frust it's frustrating. It, it is. I just don't understand the need for more, judgment calls like that's the biggest thing to me this is a judgment call ron torbert is going to completely screw this up for it's gonna somebody butcher, it's going to butcher it like and i love i love joe goodberry i agree with joe goodberry on 99.9 .9 of things but we're worlds apart on this and then and yeah he he actually i was texting with him the other day he wants to come on here and and not debate but like I said, hey, well, come on and explain to us why we're wrong. So look out for that, guys. We're going to work with Goodberry to maybe record something and, and have it out there because he's got a very hectic work schedule. So getting him on live would be just a pain in the ass. But but like there's people out there like Joe that are saying it's it's player safety and it's warranted. Right. And that's, I'm not attacking Joe. I love Joe. We're friends. Uh, no, if but, you disagree like, you with can't... him, go after his physical appearance. You have to yeah, yeah, think about him. That's how Twitter works. Yeah, it Joe, your Joe, your son runs a better forty than you. There, that's as far as I'll go. But, <laughs> but there, the NFL puts these things out. They're like, well, we care about player safety, and we want to we want to prevent injury. Da, da 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 da. Player safety is our number one thing. And then they add a Christmas game, and the team that's playing on Christmas plays the Saturday night game before or, or something like that. So they give him an extra day. It's bullshit. The NFL does Complete. not care. The NFL, they probably care. They don't want players hurt. But the NFL does not care about player safety to the extent that they're trying to put out there with this rule. It's total no. bullshit. It's bullshit, man. Bec and that's the thing, right? We're going to we're going to ban this tackling and make you yeah. try to defy the law of physics under the guise of player safety while we're pushing to add another game, an 18th game, an 18th, 18th 60 minute car crash. By the way, there's a Christmas doubleheader on Wednesday this week. Yep. So you're going to have like a Thursday night football style week with a, a, a shorter day. Logan Wilson even tweeted that out. He's like, so a team has to play Sunday and then play Wednesday. And you know why they're okay with that? And why it's been proven that Thursday night football is not good for player safety. It's been proven that guys get hurt more on play on, on Thursday night football. It's been proven that that, that four day gap between games isn't big enough, but Man. they don't care about player safety when it can make them billions of dollars because Jeff Bezos wants the rights to that last game. And they want to play football on Christmas and bury the NBA. And they're going to play a double header on football or, or on Christmas. And then tell me, that they're banning the hip drop tackle on the yep. on the idea of player safety. It doesn't make any sense, man. It's just because that doesn't hit the bottom line. They Actually, care. it could probably help them because they can find people for it. 
Yeah, yeah. They care about player safety if it doesn't affect the bottom line. You said it perfectly there. I don't know, man. I don't know if I have any any more emotion to put towards this. Like it is what it is. We have to deal with it. But you can bet your sweet little striped ass I am going to be tweeting about it come game time the first time I see it incorrectly called and I'm not going to be friendly about it and I'm going to brutalize the NFL officiating account until they block me or send lawyers after me because have you seen the rule though like yes when you you say when you see it called incorrectly nobody knows what's correct (laughs) well they haven't haven't written out correct they have it written out, but the the verbiage they use, it's like you can't you, you can pretend that you can see that in real time, but you're not gonna see it until they they go, hold on a minute. I think I saw a hip drop tackle, official timeout. We're gonna go review it. Then we're gonna sit there for 10 minutes while Tony Romo goes, I don't know, Jim. It looked like he dropped his hips, but who knows? And it's gonna just it's gonna delay the game, it's gonna be called wrong, and I feel like I'm just in a washing machine right now saying the same damn thing over and over again it's just bad for the overall game is it reviewable do you know that because i don't don't know know that no i don't know but what i'm not gonna be reviewable from a coach challenging it no what i'm saying is i bet review it yeah i know i bet the officials though are gonna look at it i don't know if it's reviewable i i don't know but like you cannot tell me you can see that in real time you tell me you look at a hip drop tackle by their definition and then you look at logan wilson's play and again he's a bangle i'm using him as an example and you go in that split blip of a second blip in time and you can tell the difference between those it can be like no i don't that wasn't one i know what i'm doing no dude you don't even know you don't even know what a catch is shut your mouth i'm mad now <laughs> dude i'm 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 angry i'm I upset hate. I dislike because it, but one of my uncles is an official and I love the guy, but I hate officials, man. God, I'm going to say this until he comes on here and does it. I'm going to build the narrative that Roger Goodell is scared to debate us on this topic. Yeah. Coward. <laughs> Unless Goodell. you show up, Rog, I'm going to yeah. just say you're scared. If you you're don't not, want this, I'll send, you, I'll send you the link. You don't want them Cincy boys in your grill, Roger. You don't want it. He doesn't know. And that, but it irks me too. You got to get me on the on the Roger train, avoiding the f bombs here. Let's fill some time, baby. An abomination call happens, game changing call, and the next day Roger goes, "Yeah, I think I think they play real great out there. Oh, I think the officials uh, really handled themselves well, and I think they called a good game." Like, dude, you're lying. You're a liar. <laughs> no, they didn't. Everybody in the world, little kids in Nike sweat factories, watching it on the tiny TVs. People in Europe watching soccer and switching back and forth going, what is this American football game? Watched it. And they all know that didn't look right. But you're sitting here in a press conference saying, yeah, I think my guys did real good out there. Full of shit. You have to. You have to, if you're the NFL, do anything and everything you can do to stop the thought and the conspiracies or whatever yep. you want to call them that yep. these games are being messed with because of gambling. And it's like the, the baseball thing. Well, this guy's gambling. This, this basketball player's gambling. Well, you know what? Let's face the reality of the situation here. You're going to say, what are we going to do about this gambling scandal in sports coming up next pro- presented by ESPN bet. Yep. Like, well, Hey, we're going to break down all this gambling, this gambling, gambling controversy live from the FanDuel studio. Like everything is presented yeah. by a sports book. Now just, every just, team has sports books yeah. all over the place. The Bengals have a sign yeah. in their stadium for their sports book and it yeah. stinks. Yeah. But I, I and hey, and just, scared. just to be clear, we have nothing against sports gambling. If that's your forte, go no, for not at all. We love, we I love, love, sports I, I love the gamble. We, yeah. Typical sports book. Go check them out. Look, we like sports gambling, but what Drew is saying is you cannot look the average fan in the face and tell us these things are wrong and turn around and do them. It's like, come on. Christmas Day game. Player safety, Christmas Day game, right? That's the gambling equivalent of what we're talking about. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, obviously, when it comes to gambling, guys, Shohei Otani shouldn't be gambling on baseball. If he wants to gamble $4.5 million on the NBA, who gives a shit? 
Yeah. Like he he can't affect that. But I know that's a whole thing because it was going to an illegal bookie, blah, blah, blah. But like it's just it's just it's just the the blatant just contract c- contrast. There yeah. is another porn bot in the chat. What is happening? Uh, um, what's, what's her name? Uh, Carmela, but Carmella. she says in the comment her name is Yvette also. Um Carmella. Zuckerberg, Elon, figure it out, dog. Like you guys are aliens with computer brains. Like like Joe Barry is the 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 Mark Zuckerberg of the NFL, right? He's wait, can we please? Brain. Oh my god, yeah. Can we? I'm gonna read this one though, because I don't think it's inappropriate. Brent Ham. No, my name is I live in France and I'm a businesswoman and a boss in the oil industry <laughs> holy shit wow she's she's commented like five times i don't know how to yeah dude she's just tagging people that have commented real comments and it's clogging up the good comments except for this one from my boy cam porn bots follow drew everywhere it's weird dude <laughs> every tweet i post it's like my nudes in bio it's like can chill you out all right can you you must you must be able to block her on facebook or something we'll explore that after the show folks that was i carmelo though i do want to thank you for for like distracting <laughs> us for a second yeah nudes in bio okay breezy dude it's that's always everywhere like that. but carmelo i do i'm sorry about your husband i hope the weather in france is nice and the oil industry is going well uh but uh, thank you for distracting us from our uh, anger there, because now now I'm happy, dude. You want to transition to a bit like a positive thing involving the I, I, I was Bengals? getting ready. To, I was getting ready to, to do a positive thing. Pull the um, graphic on, up when you're ready. on the officiating. I have one positive that okay. I have to get out before I get into all the rest of it. Go. Um, so when you look at the, they're going to have a sky judge essentially who can review things like roughing the passer and intentional grounding. Mm-hmm. Um, so they can look at the play and say, Hey, he was actually outside of the tackle box. That's not intentional grounding. And it should be able to be done very quickly. Roughing the passer. Hey, he did not hit the quarterback in the head. Um, it's, it shouldn't be rough and go pick the flag up. They can radio down to it. So they're implementing sort of the sky judge thing, which is something that. that I've called for. So I do like that, but you know what that does that saying, Hey, this shit happens in a split second. Maybe we need another set of eyes on it to confirm it's right. Are they going to do what? that? With tackles? No. What? So there's another just direct contradiction for what Say they're doing. So. But to end the officiating rule change talk on a positive note, I do like the sky judge being able to buzz down and correct an yeah. incorrect roughing or intentional grounding call because those happen in big moments too. I've got a buddy that wants officials off the field and wants every call to be done from like drones or cameras so that it's just so ridiculously reviewable. It would clog the game up, but I see what he's saying. Who can let's, let's talk about this though. Right. Yeah. Because I personally dedicate probably entirely too much of my life to football, to the Cincinnati Bengals. I tweet about them all day. Most of the clothes I wear, like I got them tattooed on my body. I'm all in. I, I, If you, my family knows if you have an event on a Sunday, don't invite me. Not going to be there. Love you. Sorry about it. See you in February. That's why I got married on February 24th. So as somebody who dedicates that much and is such a diehard and loves football so dearly, do you think I give a shit if a game takes an extra 30 minutes because there was a couple extra reviews? No, No. get the call right. No, this isn't I don't care. Yeah, this is it's going to make games longer. Who cares? Yeah. Start the four o'clock games at five o'clock. Nobody's going to. Oh, care. oh, shit. I got to drink more garage beer. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I got something to distract me from the fact that I got to go back to work tomorrow for a little bit longer now. Cool. Yeah, like, yeah, what are we talking about? Yeah. So like for for your core fan base, the people that buy the jerseys, the people that buy the hats, the people that buy the tickets. They don't care if it takes a little bit longer because they want it to be right. They like, I I just I don't get it. So oh, more reviews just going to make the game thing longer. Who cares? You can run seventeen Good. more commercials and get a few more hundred thousand dollars in your pocket every Sunday per game. Good. Yep. Now positive news on the Cincinnati Bengals front. I just realized I told you this was going to be the start of our Bengals talk, but okay. we are dumb. And it didn't happen that way. But very, very, very good news for the Bengals community. Joe Burrow's throwing footballs again. All right. And Huge. James Rapine dropped the news uh, a couple days ago. Burrow's throwing the ball. He's not back to his regular throwing routine, but he is. Ooh, garage beer burp. 
He is throwing the ball well. He's not having any issues with grip. He's not having any issues throwing. He's probably not throwing as much as he normally would at this point, but there's been some videos on the internet of him at like the black sheep training. I think that's in blue ash, a year old area. Maybe Yeah, Um, he's like, he's lifting weights. Owned by former Cincinnati Bearcat. Walk on Patrick coin. I know the guy from my high school days. So yeah, black sheep fitness man we're butchering that name patrick i know you're not watching this but uh, you know the guy personally though yeah his name is pat coin he's a good dude so he, he can sneak us in if burrow's working out i don't you know what i got maybe we'll have to message this guy he's yoked so if we piss him off he'll rip our faces off but yeah pat I just coin, stand on the wall and watch yeah 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 dude we just want to be creepy like let us just be creepy <laughs> let me just record him with my phone silently. <laughs> yeah. no his name is patrick coin awesome guy played football at Baden high school. And then I think walked on at UC and opened up this gym and is very clearly wildly successful at this point. But yeah, dude, he's working out uh, like James Rapine breaking this stuff. Also uh, a member of the big play network uh, who we are an affiliate of. Uh, they do a show. I don't know what night they do it. I'm sorry, James. I'm sorry, Fox, but enter the jungle. Great show just like ours. Uh, but him, him putting out there that he's doing the throwing routine and he's getting back to his normal everyday routine. You see these videos of him with the 45s in his hand. He's gripping the barbells. He's gripping the weights. Like that wrist has strength to it. It's just so nice to see him. You know, everybody was freaking out. Everybody yeah. was freaking out. They're like, Joe Burrow shook hands with Donald Trump. Oh my God. And I'm in the background. Like I, I saw it, but he, he shook it with form. his right hand and it looked pretty solid. He shook you it with it. his right hand and it didn't look to be an issue. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 100%. So yeah, great news um, for he the said Bengals it, community on that. So it said he would be in his routine in April. It sounded like he'll be back in his throwing routine in April and could be cleared as early as May is kind of what I'm reading. Now that's all subject to change uh, on how Joe's body's really doing, how he feels mentally, how his doctors and his trainers feel. Uh, I say, Joe, take all the time you need right now. Get healthy. Let's not have any more organs explode and let's get you through an off season and go win a damn championship. Let's just, I I just want a training camp, man. Don't rush anything back till yeah. training camp. Take OTAs and all that stuff that happened in the spring, that's all well and good. But, like, I want this dude to be able to play in training camp. I want him to maybe play a half of football in the preseason because um, yeah. I'm sick of having to suck for the first month while everybody gets everything figured out. But, yeah, um, just be ready for camp. Don't don't rush anything yet. But he, he looks like he's doing great, man. So um, that's that's yeah, big news truly. for everybody. We love that. Um, before we get up out of here, let's go through some comments that aren't from it. porn bots. Um, I saw a good one Carmelo. up here onto the replay thing. Carmela, you stink. Um, who does not stink is our good friend Darth Bingle. He says, I can get girl. behind the replay assistant if they allow live video in that booth like the XFL. It's done in yeah. back rooms. It just allows more conspiracies to conspiracies to form. And that's a great point because I watched the XFL. Um, yeah, did DC you see defenders it? fans since day one. Um, you know, so no, no new fans as it's now the UFL, but yeah. um, I think it was Dean Blandino. If I'm not mistaken, he's in a war room. Mm-hmm. He's reviewing the play and he's like, yo here. Okay. Here he's going through the play. They're you showing it on the screen. It. They're showing him go through the process and then they show him radio the call into the official. I mm-hmm. think that's great. Oh, I think the NFL awesome. should 100% do it. Yeah, the XF, the XFL had a lot of good stuff, man. Like the legitimate, like mid mid coaching interviews and stuff. Like uh, there was a lot of cool broadcast stuff they did, but you're right. They showed him reviewing the call. They showed his screens. You heard every word he said up until the point that he radios it in and hangs up. Absolutely. I agree with that. Transparency is absolutely key. I think that that is great. And I think that that would hush some of the conspiracies that you see because dude, TikTok's a wild place. There are, yeah, there's a lot going on on TikTok with all kinds of different conspiracy theories. But when you get down to sports and the NFL, I'll watch stuff and it'll be a three minute video and I'll end that video. Like, Damn, I can see that. That that oh yeah. That's not too, I'm not necessarily saying they're all true, but sometimes I'm like, damn, that like that makes a lot of sense. That could be happening. So yeah. I, I think that that would be a great idea if they have a dude. You can't tell me the NFL doesn't have money for it. They can put him in a yeah. truck outside the stadium, 
on mm -hmm. every single broadcast. There's probably all kinds of, of people that would be down for that. Um, and they could just radio it in. Okay. We're not going to go to, I don't know the other guy, uh, Italian guy, big Pisano. Uh, I can't think of his name, but it's one of the rules analysts on the TV and it's all well and good Ready? when they show him in a studio somewhere. And he's just sitting in the studio like, well, if it was me, I would call a pass interference. Or if it was me, I would say it was a fumble. That's all well and good. But give me the guy that's actually on the horn with the people making oh, yeah. the calls and just put it on screen. Well, if you don't have anything to hide, why worry about it? Absolutely. I totally agree. Totally agree. I just want to point out. We've... Zach Cochran. What a dog, what do dude. He's going to the Battle Hawks game in Detroit this weekend. He's going to watch AJ cool. McCarron throw the pill up there in Detroit. That's cool. I funny story. I've been to a Battle Ox game. Former, former Brown and Bengal Darius Hillary went and played mm -hmm. for the Battle Hawks. I went to high school with him, and I got to see him play. So that was neat. So those games are fun, dude. <laughs> That's it's a different level they got of the football. Beer snake going. Yeah, different level of football. But those those XFL what, is it UFL now? They merged. They're, it's UFL they're, now. They moved. They merged with the USFL, which completely stunk. Um, yeah. And it's fun. Don't don't turn it on expecting NFL football no, by any fun. means. Yeah. But for me, I like I I like when they drop f bombs and mid game interviews and yeah. beer snakes going up yeah. in DC. Yeah. And it's it's, it's football like, uh, I'm not invested in, but it's football to watch when there's no football on, so I enjoy it. To, uh, to me, I think those leagues succeed, or that league succeeds if they go the Florence Yalls and Dayton Dragons route. Like it's like yeah. the minor league football. I don't think that's what they want to do. I think they want to directly compete with the NFL, which to me, okay, buddy, go ahead. Try like if they like had like crazy fun promotions and like mascots getting tattoos, like the Florence y'all guy at the center, like, and just have fun with it. That league will explode and it'll be fun, man. I don't know. It's in good hands with the rock. I think um, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was doing do, well. It was doing yeah. well. And then the whole planet shut down and there was just yeah, no money. It was. Yeah. Um, I, I do but, want to point out we're, we're well over 500 across, across all platforms for tonight. Shout so out. thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, not one of our, more massive episodes we've had in the past, but just, I mean, 500 people watching us talk live is absolutely just ridiculous. Um, uh, I also want to point out that big place Cincy is presented by garage beer and typical sports book. Drink one, bet the other. Don't come crying to drew and I, when you lose all your money. And with that, that's all I got drew, man. I mean, we've, we've crested the hour mark. I think people, uh, I've loved watching us yap, but I think they can only tolerate it for like 45 minutes. So we've gone past a lot of people that sticking around a lot yeah. of people sticking around that were here at the, at the beginning and we, we mm -hmm. truly appreciate it, but yeah, we can get up out of here. We're going to start getting into the draft. Um, uh, there's been yeah no real movement on the Bengals free agent front. Um, uh, they got some money left. Um, I do want to point out this one thing that I noticed, and maybe Go. this is me doing another conspiracy type thing but i did notice that t higgins posted oh my god what did i just do why are we so tiny all right um i do want to point out that t higgins just posted on his instagram today that he's having a youth football camp i believe yep. april 13th in loveland, loveland ohio yeah. and the conspiracy theorist in me maybe the overly optimistic hopeful fan in me is like t plans to be in ohio in november does he or uh, November, April. T April. plans to be in Ohio in April, doesn't he? Hmm, what does that mean? T, so, listen, here, let's. Here's how deep this goes. T coming to Ohio, doing a football camp in a Cincinnati area city at Loveland High School, Loveland High School, home of the Loveland Tigers. Uh, carry the one, connect the dot. He's signing an extension for sure. Tigers, Bengals, boom. Kevin makes a great point. Please like subscribe all the yeah. stuff we're supposed to ask you to do that we forget to do because we are just shooting the shit here and I don't want to be too salesman -y or anything, but we do appreciate likes and subscribes. We hit over 500 on our new Twitter account that we just established a few weeks ago. So that's awesome. We appreciate you guys. Yeah. Um, Dar says he can tolerate at least 60 minutes of us. Well, we're over that Beautiful. too. So we should probably get up out of here. We'll see you next Thursday, eight o'clock Eastern standard time here on big place. Cincy. Who's <laughs>